G.I. Joe fans, Joe Motion Videos 82 here. It is time for another G.I. Joe toy review. And today we're going to wind back the clock a little bit to 1986 uh, to the fifth series of G.I. Joe. We're going to be looking at a very iconic and popular vehicle amongst toy collectors. It is the 1986 Dreadnought Thunder Machine. This came rolling into our hearts as a part of the fifth series in the fifth part mini series Arise Serpentor Arise. Yes, that was such a cool mini series. Um, I, I know I bring it up a lot on this channel, and I am so sorry that I do. No, I'm not. Um, that mini series introduced us to the new lineup of Joe's. It gave us Sergeant Slaughter, it gave us the Bats, it gave us General Hawk, Flint, Lady J, Bazooka, Xandar, Zorana, Monkey Wrench, it gave us five Dreadnoughts, five Xandar, Zorana, Monkey Wrench, Thrasher, sorry, four Four monkey, four four dreadnoughts. We can never have enough dreadnoughts. We c we can't. I mean, it it gave us so many, so many cool, cool action figures. I mean, it it just it blew me out of the water. I mean, yeah, people say 1985 was the golden year for GI Joe. It was. It was, I mean, they, 85 gave us the, the world's largest toy. And yes, it, it still holds that record. The USS flag, seven feet long. I know HasLab is caught, um, crowdfunding more toys, but that was, you know, this was Hasbro's own. They didn't have to crowdfund. And I think they would have been laughed at back then people you want our money you want us to pay you to build a toy for us <laughs> no and essentially that's what we're doing they're building a toy and then we're buying it from them we're not paying them to build it for us see that's the difference but we get it exclusively if we pay them to build it that's what we're doing we're commissioning them to build it so it's crowdfunding um now that would have been very laughable back then and people just said oh hell no um, but these days it's different so anyway yeah the USS flag holds the record for the world's biggest toy so yes yeah, 85 is very iconic and many toy companies tried to compete back then 80s bigger the better the more you had the bigger it was the better, the more affluent you looked. And that was the, the mindset of the 80s. The more toys you had, the more affluent your family looked. The bigger your toy was, the more affluent you appeared. The bit nicer clothes you had. Um, it was all, all about materialism. But um, that was just the 80s. It was weird, very weird. I remember hearing in the movie that there there is no nobility in poverty. Um, yeah, things like that. Um, the rise of the yuppie. I remember I wanted to be a yuppie <laughs> when I was little. Um, so anyway, yeah, um, eighty six. 86 was my year for, for G.I. Joe. I was 12 going on 13. Um, and I just could not be happier with, with the way the toy direction, you know, G.I. Joe was going. And that was when I really started, I was old enough to really go out and start working, um, doing yard work and stuff like that for people. I started earning my own money, so I was able to buy my own toys, and yeah, yeah, Joes were out there, man. Star Wars was long, long, you know, three years dead, 
you know, Empire or Return of the Jedi had been come out in '83, so the toy line was gone. Uh, so we were collecting Masters of the Universe, and I'd occasionally get GI Joes. My mom didn't want me to get too too involved in too many toy lines and have toys scattered all over the house. Um, but I would still buy a few Joes here and there. But um, yeah, I '86. It just blew my mind. I wow. Um, uh, my friend John had this. My friend John had this. I bring him up a lot in this. If you haven't been following my my channel long enough, I I grew up with this kid. Um, his name was John Hancock, and he. he he had just about every G.I. Joe toy you could think of. And um, every Friday he would go out with his mom. He was the youngest in his family and was from a, a split family. And um, so he would just, it was just he and his, his mom and I think his second to the oldest brother. And his brother had gone away to the army so it was just he and his mom. And um, so she would take him out every Friday and they would go shopping and he would come back with a new toy every week. But this, this week, this particular weekend, I was spending the night with him and we had gone out um, on a Saturday and went to a uh, toy store called um, Lionel Play World. It was a sister to, uh, store to Children's Palace. Uh, you folks in the Midwest, it was Children's Palace out here in the American Southwest. It was um, uh, Lionel Play World. And um, he bought this. And we went home and we were putting this thing together. And it was just this mess of parts. And um, we had, he had a tough time putting it together. The roll cage was the biggest thing. Um, that he had um, trouble putting it on because it kept on popping off and he would get frustrated. Um, so we finally got it put together. Um, he wouldn't let me play with it because it's brand new. He, his mom got frustrated. But let Byron play with that. Blah, blah, blah. I understood the rule of toys. You can't play with it. You can't touch it. It's new. So he let me hold it for a few seconds and then he played with it. I got to play with um, Thrasher. Um, but he, since this was so, such a clumsy, fall apart toy, he, he didn't want me to touch it. Um, so I got to admire it from afar. But he gave me a newer toy and let me play with that to appease me, I guess. Um, and which I, I understood. I understood completely because I was very protective of my toys as well. Um, so we never had any conflicts over I love that I hate you nothing like that I was very mature about it um, so that was that I, I respected it as very respectful of his household and everything and and that was that so um, yeah I never really got to spend any time personally with the with this toy um, so having the opportun opportunity to buy it as an adult and to own it. I remember the day that it came in the mail. Oh man, that was like Christmas. Uh, that, that was something. But um, I'm not going to chew your ear any longer on that. Um, I'll get into the review, but I think the original retail price on this, I'm sorry, I didn't do my homework as I usually do on this. I think the original retail price on this was around six bucks or seven, something, somewhere on that, but on the aftermarket, you're gonna find it much more. Um, and you could buy the, the pieces of this. This would be something I'd definitely do a build on the budget thing, um, is it might be cheaper to try to buy it as complete as you can and buy the parts as you go. And just watch your shipping and you'll be able to come in at a cheaper price um, so anyway let's go ahead and get into this review all right here we go 
Right, take two. I hate when this doesn't want to upload. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at Thrasher. Um, real cool action figure. They always make the the vehicle drivers a little more special, and as they should. You're paying extra. Um, he is wearing lacrosse armor. Uh, up here on his body and down here on his on the rest of his body I should say so he's wearing lacrosse pads they're clipped up here on his shoulders with silver clips you can see the ties down here on his chest flips around to the back nice detail there goes over a green half shirt to show his midriff very popular in the 80s for men to wear half shirts to show their midriffs. Uh, he is wearing um, Z uh, Zartan-esque shoulder armor. You can see his punked out hairdo. Kind of looks like Dan Aykroyd in the face to me. Dan Aykroyd is such a cool, cool actor. He has a new show coming up on the History Channel. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Wearing gray gloves. He has a black and silver wristband. If you can still see the silver one, it's closer to the glove. He's wearing a lacrosse glove on that hand over a gray glove. And then he has this padded waist armor or diaper, I should say. Um, don't know the proper term for it. Black belt pouch on that side the belt has silver studs on it wearing thigh pads silver knee pads and he has spiked shin guards over gray biker boots you see the buckles down there on the pad on the cross his boots he has a black lacrosse stick with a spiked lacrosse ball the handle of the stick has always been too thick to fit safely into his hand, so I just have him hold the lacrosse stick by the basket. Um, he never held on to the lacrosse stick, for me anyway. I'm sure there are other kids that forced it into his hands and stretched or broke his thumbs, but... Um, I've never found any on the aftermarket with broken thumbs, but I'm glad to see a vehicle driver still come with some sort of a weapon. That was a, a rarity. So looking at the star of the show, let's just go ahead and look at the profile of the vehicle first. Um, you can see this is coupled together as all um, Dreadnought vehicles are, um, this is very Mad Max style of a vehicle. Uh, armor plating. For the driver and for the back wheel this does not lift up um, the side does lift up the armor to allow you to fit the vehicle driver in um, the side is dented up you can see the dreadnought emblem there and some numbering on the side he does have a, a mirror here that rotates around uh, this is often missing, so watch for that on the aftermarket. He has running boards on each side, and each side does have four foot pegs on it. So this does carry a total of ten figures, or ten dreadnoughts, or cobra figures. Um, the wheels are made of rubber. They're each individually mushroom pegged on. We'll go over that here in a second. And looking at the back here, um, it says Ram Turbo Danger. This is a ramjet, meaning as it flies it on a, a jet aircraft, it, it takes in oxygen, which it burns for fuel. So this one, as it goes, as it, it won't fly as fast as a jet, but this will take in oxygen and use it for fuel as well but not as much as a jet would um, you can see this armor is wanting to slide out but it doesn't 
detach, thank goodness. You see that there's some detail on the jet itself. I'm flipping around to the back, the decals do need to be cleaned up some. There is a tow hook right here, which is a rarity for Cobra vehicles. The other side is the exact same. Here on the front, you can see that there are, this is a police light bar. And here is more armor plating for the driver up at the front. Um, has a Gatling gun here on the, the front. You, you could, he had to take the whole engine block out to fit the Gatling gun. That's why he has the ramjet in the back. But you can turn the Gatling gun, if I could get my fat hand out of the way, and it's supposed to move the bullets around. You can see there. There's a feature that pseudo worked, good enough for me. Um, in the front grill, see it's a 30 millimeter cannon Ducks Arpo packs out by rough instant aeration. Okay. The front grill is from a Pontiac Trans Am, made famous by Smokey and the Bandit. And this grill right here is to help protect the gun. But you can see there are stress marks on this grill. Uh, it's from it being bumped up against things no doubt it'll be rammed against things. And you can see stress marks right here on the roll cage. So this thing, the plastic does become de degraded over time. And we'll take a look at the cabin here in a minute. But I want to point out here on the bottom, these are appear to be um, metal rivets that hold the chassis on this is a pretty chunky vehicle and weighs feels like it weighs close to a pound the wheels are made of rubber they're ended independently spinning and they do turn nice play feature uh, we could look on the inside there you could lift up the, the roll cage to fit the driver in. Looks like the inside of a Trans Am. You have the, the padded seats, um, the dashboard, a lot of detail on there, a lot of detail in, inside there. They spent a lot of time in there working on this. And there we go, there's the turbine. Um, I'm glad this is not an enclosed cabin because that turbine would just suck everything out of the cabin inside that turbine. So <clears throat> I feel sorry for whoever sits next to that. You would have to wear hearing protection because the, the high speed wind of that turbine would just really cause some hearing damage. So obviously this is not a practical vehicle, but who thinks of practical when you are a Dreadnought? Very cool aesthetically, but practical now. Um, so I'm glad this is an open roll cage for that to actually function. And I'm, I'm glad that they thought about that when they put this ramjet on there for it to be an open roll open cage because otherwise they would just get sucked into that pieces of their clothing maybe that's what happened to his shirt he got sucked into the the ramjet so um anyway that is the dreadnought thunder machine i just love this thing um a lot of bits and bobs on there that fall off um these little pieces that you have to put on 
and take off, uh, not take off, but hopefully once you put them on, they stay on. That could easily fall off. I find a lot of the, I see a lot of these on the aftermarket, a lot of the roll cage or the front cages here. Um, of course, the armor, stuff like this on the aftermarket where people are either taking them off their thunder machines, stripping them down to resell them, which I think is, is a terrible thing to do, but that's the only way you can do it to preserve these wonderful vehicles or people just have parts left over from their childhood that they're trying to sell. I mean, to tear apart a complete good vehicle to sell it ah it hurts but I see why you have to do it to preserve these plastic artifacts oh, yeah I love this thing yeah there there is just so much to be said about this I could have talked all day about this vehicle it has some some weight to it um, I would say it weighs slightly over a pound this is a pretty chunky vehicle um, this was one that we definitely did not jump I remember that one um, John just played with it by himself um, the bottom as I'm looking at it right here you can see these are actually rivets it's riveted on um, yeah, I, I never touched this as a kid. Um, so having it as an adult was actually the first time I physically touched one. So, yeah, it's, I, I really can't see why John didn't want me to, to play with it. Um, this is, um, just the, the amount of time it took him to put it together and get everything to stay together. You see how much hassle I was having to get the roll bar to fit back onto that. Um, it, it was a very, it's, it's finicky to get that together. Um, oh, one more thing. The wheels. They do and they do turn. I forgot to point that out. I knew that feature was there. I forgot to point to point that out. The wheels do turn. Um, so it's a great vehicle. Uh, very popular amongst the collectors, like I said, and it's still popular and it always will be. Uh, and I hope future generations, as they watch these and listen to their parents and grandparents talk about these, that they'll want to play with them. And so right now, the, it's the children of the collectors that are playing with them. And I, I hope that they have the same bond with toys that we had. Um, I know with new electronic devices coming out, toys are different for kids. Uh, they, we had our imaginations to guide us in our, our playtime. So who knows, you know, toys as we know them are going away, but electronics are the way of the future and um, these plastic artifacts <laughs> as they're slowly becoming are <clears throat> are the past um, so let's preserve them keep them the way that we knew them and that's what I'm doing um, preserving the ones that I had as a child and um, I'll share them with my grandkids and just enjoy them as the way they are. Um, as they are, they're, they're artifacts now, they're antiques and it, it tells a story of the past. Uh, and that 
is cool. Yeah, your grandparents and your parents had cool stuff. Biggest electronics we had were those handheld video games that had the little dots that went across the screen. And we had Nintendos and Ataris. But the biggest electronic we had was here. So anyway, food for thought, guys. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you so much for sticking with this old boy and listening to me yammer on. Um, you guys stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to everyone. Be kind to yourselves and be kind to your animals. They know nothing but unconditional love. So until next week, this is Joe Mosher Videos 82 saying see you later. Thanks for sticking with me all this time. I really appreciate it. You made this channel successful. Bye-bye.